uh, a Mexican new wave uh, was Juan Lopez Moctezuma, who would emerge as a major new Mexican horror and fantasy film director during this period. Moctezuma would produce the highly popular El Topo in 1971, then set out to direct his first feature film, La Mansión de la Locura, also known as Dr. Tar's Torture Dungeon, also known as House of Madness, also known as the System of Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. Uh, this is in 1972. Uh, this is a gothic, very gothic horror film set in 19th century France that combines elements of Peter Newbrook's absurdist play, Marette Sade, with Edgar Allan Poe's classic short story. Uh, the movie has journalist Arturo Hansel visit an asylum and eventually discover that a madman, Claudio Brook, has taken it over, having impersonated the doctor and the staff. Well, they're all inmates from the asylum. Now, after some weird and violent happenings, the love interest is introduced into the story uh, as the real psychiatrist's daughter, played by Ellen Sherman, is rescued by Handel. Uh, and the inmates are allowed to indulge their compulsions and act out their innermost fantasies. Uh, the inmates include a corn-eating chicken man and a wannabe Lady Godiva, as well as an entire rogues gallery of menacing, crazy characters. Now, an experienced television and avant-garde theater director, Moctezuma, handles the shifts between gothic hor horror and the humorously sinister erotic chaos in the asylum's grounds with considerable cinematic skill. A cinematographer, Raphael Corchidi, uh, dazzles the eye with the solarized color sequences that open the movie, uh, as well as the garish grotesqueries at the end. Uh, he effectively situates the movie in a no-man's land between the comic and the uncanny. The director's love of comic books and surrealism is plainly in evidence. For example, the use of Lu one of Louis Bunnell's uh, favorite actors, Claudio Brook, and the playful way uh, that uh, Mock DeZuma plays with the generic conventions of the gothic horror film genre. Mock DeZuma would follow up his highly successful La Mansión de la Locura with a bisexual vampire thriller called Mary Bloody Mary. Uh, which was released in 1974. Uh, in the movie, Mary, played by Christina Ferrare, is an artist and as such is an intellectual, which of course means in classic horror film convention uh, that she is also a perverted maniac. Uh, Mary is in the habit of stabbing unsuspecting victims of both sexes in the neck and drinking their blood while in the heat of passion. Soon, Mary discovers that she has competition from another vampire, her own father, played by John Carradine, uh, who was thought uh, to be dead, but actually was just disfigured in a fire. Carradine has, in fact, returned in order to kill his wayward daughter. Uh, he wants to kill Mary in order to rescue her soul from vampirism, but she gets the better of him and kills both Caroline, her father, and her male lover, David Young, in the movie's blood-soaked finale. The sexploitation aspect is uh, represented primarily by Mary, Christina Ferrari's graphically exquisite lesbian encounters with Greta, played by Helena Rojo. Uh, director, Mark Dezuma, shows some grand visual flair in a number of sequences. Uh, but his next film, Al Ucarda, 1975, offered the talented filmmaker a greater scope for his Baroque sense of stylization. In Al Ucarda, Moctezuma embarks on a rather complex and bloody psychosexual religious tale, which chronicles the nightmarish anxieties of a Roman Catholic Mexican macho male. Anxieties that are provoked by the idea of sexuality in general, but lesbianism in particular. In the movie, Justine, played by uh, the waif-like Susanna Camini, uh, the name Justine is an obvious reference to Desaad's literary heroine, 
Well, she lives in a monastery and comes under the spell of a venomous little witch called Alucarda, played by Tina Romero. Now, they indulge in unclean and unholy practices, such as witchcraft, vampirism, and lesbian sex, and soon get the other nuns to join in on the fun. The sisters, the nuns, who are essentially victims of Roman Catholic sexual repression, are now unleashed and indulge in a hysterical lust, a lust for sex, a lust for pleasure, a lust for pain, and a lust for blood, uh, flamboyant and perverse desires uh, that include erotic vampire activities, sadistic punishments, and uninhibited carnage. As the nuns surrender themselves to their unholy passions, they are aided and protected by a Dr. Ozkek, uh, played by Claudio Brook, who also appears in the movie as a hunchback and as a warlock. Now, the hooded monks, led by Father Lazaro, played by David Silva, try to exercise Justine and try to persecute the evil Alucarda, who has infected the congregation of nuns with a type of plague, the plague of unbridled sexuality. The priest and the hooded monks well, their exorcism goes horribly wrong, and the only result is Justine's apparent death. A death that is followed by an explosion of hellish origin and epic proportions uh, that climaxes in a festival of blood and screaming, screaming from both pleasure and pain. Now, one of the visual highlights of the film is the sudden resurrection of Justine as she emerges from her blood-filled tomb. The claustrophobic nunnery setting gives the director, Moctezuma, ample opportunity to indulge his fondness for Baroque tableau-style composition, as well as his fondness for eerie atmosphere. Excuse me. And the filmmaker, uh, well, achieves a sense of nightmarish absurdity and uncanny intensity. Uh, very impressive images, which are enhanced by the good special effects. Uh, and cinematographer Xavier Cruz, expert lighting. Now, with these three great Gothic horror films, director Juan Lopez Mock Tezuma showcased his genuine talent for creating poisonously enveloping cinematic worlds. Sadly, after reaching uh, new levels of Gothic height, Gothic intensity, the Mexican horror film uh, would virtually collapse uh, in the late 1970s, with nothing notable or noteworthy being produced. The decline of the Mexican 